Hey guys, so I've been playing some random Switch games and they're all pretty inexpensive. So I thought it would be fun to do a quick little video showing you five Switch games that you should totally check out. So let's get going. Number one, Daddish. He's a dad and a radish, hence the name Daddish. His little radish children go missing and you have to find them. It's a simple but fun little platformer that I'm very glad I stumbled upon. You have to jump over spikes, solve simple puzzles, and watch out for the cute little burgers and fries that are actually killer. So fast food is totally your enemy in this game, much like in real life, sadly. Oh, and there's also possums. Every 10 levels you encounter a boss, and the levels go by rather quickly, at least in the beginning. It has 50 levels with 50 little radishes to find, so this will be sure to keep you busy. I actually found myself looking forward towards the end of each stage to read the dialogue, which is something that never happens with me because I usually do not care about dialogue. The design is very clean with bright colors, making this one of the happiest little games I've played in a long time. Since pretty much all you do is jump and double jump, I was surprised at how fun the gameplay actually was. This is a game that's really fun to come back to whenever you just want to pick up and play something for 10 minutes here and there. Number 2, Gato Robato. When I was browsing through the eShop one night, Gato Robato instantly spoke to me because I saw a cute little kitty in a giant mech suit. Mech kitty, if you will. So I bought the game since it was rather cheap and I'm very glad I did. In this Devolver game, your human crashes his spaceship leaving him immobilized. So it's up to you and his kitty friend to save the day. And despite only saying meow, he does quite well. Much like Daddish, it has some cute back and forth, but not so much dialogue that it gets annoying. It's completely black and white, which I actually kind of like, and it feels like a shorter, less intense version of a Metroidvania game. You can get in and out of your robot suit when needed, like to swim or jump through tight spaces, and it controls pretty well. When you're in the suit, you get different power-ups, and you can see the joy on Kitty's face when he blows an enemy away. It's great. I really do like the little side panel showing the cat's expressions. I haven't beaten this yet, but so far it feels like just the right amount of difficulty. I don't think I'll get so lost and frustrated that I'll quit. At least for now. <laughs> Number 3, Assault Android Cactus. So first of all, I gotta admit, I cannot remember the title of this game in everyday conversation if my life depended on it. I know I just read the title, but that's because I have like notes that I'm looking at. <laughs> I always call it the Cactus Android game, but whatever, it's Assault Android Cactus, which does sound much cooler if you can actually remember it. If you want a game where you can just pick it up and start shooting stuff, then this is for you. It's a super fast paced twin stick shooter with levels so short they're over before you'll know it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's fast paced style is actually what makes this game work without it getting boring. I like it because even if you suck at it and are super sloppy about it, you can still get the job done. I feel like there's a that's what she said joke in there somewhere, but I'll digress. Feel free to leave me your joke in the comments though. You need to fight your way through various robotic space bugs that are constantly swarming you. At first, it's not so bad, but after beating the first boss, it gets pretty out of control. You can choose between various characters who have slightly different weapons. Of course, I first went with the red-headed girl with glasses, hmm, I wonder why. But then I learned that I actually liked the other characters a bit better, especially this weird little android that was the first to unlock. She may pick her nose and say weird things, Pineapple. but her secondary attack is actually awesome. Overall, the character design isn't really my style, but the game itself looks great and the gameplay, which is what really matters, is super smooth. You can switch between weapons pretty easily, even though your second weapon, you can only use it so much because it drains your battery. So you need to be careful that your battery stays charged. Enemies sometimes drop battery power-ups, so it isn't really an issue. Unless, of course, you are totally bombarded and can't get to them in time. If you die, a funny little song plays. I'm just a little android. I noticed that the difficulty really started to ramp up when I got to the first boss. I finally found a character I liked for this battle and figured out how to destroy him after some good old trial and error. This can also be played co-op, which I imagine be a total hectic mess, but fun nonetheless. There's 25 stages in the campaign, a boss rush, and online leaderboards, so that's pretty cool. And apparently this came out years ago, so I'm sure some of you guys already know about it, but at least I'm discovering it now. Number 4, Kid Trip. At first, Kid Trip looks like a basic side-scroller done in that new retro-looking style that has been done to death, 
but it's actually a lot more fun than that. You are an Ash Ketchum looking fella in a world that looks a lot like Adventure Island. You're just running and running and running. It's an auto running game, but it's actually a lot more brutal than it looks. A lot more brutal. You can slow down, kind of, but you can't totally stop. You know, hence the auto running genre. You can also throw rocks and jump on enemies, which is totally enough once you get the hang of it. Which means you died enough times to have most of the level memorized, or your reflexes are just super on point, and if that's the case, I'm totally jealous. The enemy I hate the most is the monkey in the tree because he's basically two enemies in one. You gotta make sure to shoot, jump, or dodge him, and then you also gotta worry about his coconut. Brutal. There are also little instances with moving platforms that really make your blood boil. What really is brutal is the fact that when you die, it sends you all the way back to the beginning of the level. So that sucks since there are no checkpoints. At least I haven't seen any yet. And you'll be seeing this screen a lot. But you'll find yourself continuously trying until you make it. You know, because it's fun. In the torturous kind of way. Number five, Breakforcist Battle. Or should I say hashtag Breakforcist Battle? I don't know, but it's a battle of breakfast. Anyway, I love Breakout on Atari and I love breakfast foods. So when I saw this, I had to try it. Oh, and it's also exorcism themed, but still super cute. Love it. You break away pieces of waffles, toast, and eggs while they slowly make their way down, giving you less and less room to save them. Erm, um, exercise them from the breakfast devil, I guess? I don't know. This game gets hectic when you get an item that gives you multiple balls to bounce, and sometimes there's just too much going on. But that's what makes it fun. The chaos. You can play it by yourself or with up to four players. It's a fun little game that's fun to come back to whenever you feel like breaking apart some breakfast items. So there you have it, five random Switch games that I think you should check out. Thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon. Bye!